So I'd like to start with introducing Evan Kane. We actually can't see him, but we'll be sharing a screen with all of his images and he'll be talking um, from behind the scenes and showing us all of his images and answering your questions. So just to introduce Evan, he's a professional portrait photographer based in Seattle. He specializes in um, colorful backgrounds, um, fantasy or fairy tale inspired, inspired tones, and he's also a writer for F Stoppers, um, an online community for um, to educate photographers and creatives. So I'm going to pass it off to Evan. I'm going to share my screen first. Hey, folks, how's everybody doing? Um, this is Evan. I'm Evan. Evan Kane. Um, like Paige said, I'm a photographer based in the Pacific Northwest near Seattle. I'm originally from Colorado. I uh, moved out to this area a couple of years ago. I've um, been doing photography for about, about four and a half, five years or so now. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm a big advocate for, for printed work, whether it's professional or personal. Um, you know, I think it's, it's a really important part of the process, uh, especially in the very, very digital age that we live in. Um, I think it's really important to keep printing. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go over some different papers, lots of different questions. Uh, if anybody has any questions about the photos or about the paper or anything, um, yeah, just throw it out there in chat and we will do our best to, to catch everything, address everything. Looks like we, there's a lot of people from all over the place. I'm seeing a lot of people kind of spread all over the U.S., the world, Got from Norway, Minneapolis, Indiana. Yeah, That's it's awesome. fun to see where everyone is coming from. So thanks yeah, for sharing so that. Cool. So Evan, I'm going to kick it off with um, a question that we often receive, which is, what paper should I use? It's hard for us to answer since, you know, everyone's work is different and everyone prefers something different. So I know you're going to share a lot of your advice and expertise on choosing a paper. So to start, do you have a go-to paper or do you change the paper according to what image you are printing? So that's a... Really good question, a really common question. It's probably one of the first things people ask is just, you know, what's the best paper or what paper should I choose? Um, and it's, it's one of those things that's just completely subjective. There's not really a right answer. Like there isn't just a flat out best paper. So I think for me, it's really important to choose the paper based on the specific image rather than just picking a paper and then printing all your images on it. So I have a bunch of different ones that I like. Um, there are some that I think are good that I'm not particularly fond of for my work. And we can kind of go into that when we get it or when we get to some of the examples. But uh, but the, the short answer to that question is just there's no right answer. Like you have to, you have to try different papers to find out which one kind of connects with your style of photography. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. So since you do a lot of portraits, does that affect the type of paper that you print on? Um, not really. I don't think the portrait specifically. Uh, I think more than anything, it's kind of the the style, um, the the type of editing, and the kind of final look that I go for. Kind of the the moody, gloomy, uh, kind of fantasy esque look. More than anything, lends itself to certain papers more than others. Um, but as far as like portraiture in general, I don't really think there's just like a you know this you know, this paper is good for people, this one isn't type of thing. So, so I think it just depends on the broad style of the work or even the specific image. Um, I mean, I have, I have some images that I would do on certain papers um, that I wouldn't on others, just, just image by image basis. So 
Right. I know yeah. some people tend to stay away from maybe like a textured paper because they think it might affect the way the skin looks in the, in a portrait, um, printed portrait. But it seems like you kind of use almost everything still. Yeah, a little bit. And that's a good uh, that's a good point and kind of segue there. I'm actually a huge fan of textured papers. I mean, honestly, the more textured, the better. I'm I'm a really tactile person, uh, and when and when you print something on like a textured paper and you kind of just, you know, you have it in your hand, you know, you roll your thumb or your fingers over the image and you can actually feel the the surface of the paper. Um, I'm a huge fan of that. I like the way it looks. I like the way it kind of complements the matte style of my images anyway. So I'm personally a big fan of textured paper. And I know that initially some people might kind of steer away from that because you're you're unsure of how it'll look if the paper itself has a has a heavy surface texture but I would say absolutely try it um, right. you, you probably end up pleasantly surprised like the the heavy textured papers are honestly some of my go-tos uh, they're, they're my favorites so this one is printed on is this one Entrada yeah so there are two of that image um, one, yeah, one is the Entrada, the Reg Natural 300, and the other is the Barita. So you basically have the matte and then a glossy um, kind of equivalent of that rag there. Um, and both have have a, a little bit of a surface texture to them. It's not it's not super heavy. Um, but it's there, you can definitely see it in the right angle, the right light. Um, and what's interesting about that image that you see on your screen is that the images side by side are, it's the same image and there's been no um, modifications or edits to the image for the different papers. Like once the file is done, the paper kind of does the rest and you get a really distinct difference when you go from, you know, say a matte type paper to a, a glossy, you know, fine art paper. Right. And this is actually an interesting question that someone asked was, does the printed size impact the type of paper that you're choosing? Um, not really. Um, the only thing that comes to mind, honestly, is some papers are more expensive than others. Um, so if you were going to do an absolutely enormous print, certain papers would be substantially more expensive at the larger sizes. But, but generally, the size is not, uh, is not a concern. Right. So just going back to the beginning, what is your process like in selecting a paper for a particular image? Do you run any test prints or look at skin tones, backgrounds, color, et cetera? I basically look at the image um, just on, on a screen. Sometimes I look at it on a couple different screens, look at it on a phone screen, computer screen. Uh, and my first question is basically just, is the image I'm looking at, is it, does it feel like a matte image? Is it high contrast, low contrast? Like what is the image that I'm looking at? Um, and then I'll kind of pick a paper that I think accents that or kind of accentuates the mood of the image. Um, yeah, so like that one you see there, that image, uh, I would consider that a pretty high contrast image compared to some of my other ones. Uh, it has a pretty strong gradient from lighter at the top going to pretty deep saturated blacks at the bottom. So for that one, I would consider, you know, Barita papers, um, uh, glossy papers, um, more so than a matte paper, just because in my mind, an image like that one has a higher contrast. And which uh, paper is this? So that one there, there are a couple uh, different ones. Uh, they're, they're both the metallic uh, for that example. One is the 
uh, slick rock. And the other is the metallic pearl. So you have the metallic silver and then the metallic pearl. And like I said earlier, there are a couple papers that just generally I'm not super fond of for my work. And the metallic is one of them. Um, I think it's a cool, it's a really cool paper. Uh, it, you know, it's called metallic. So think metal. It has a, you know, a high kind of sheen, you know, metallic look and feel to it. It's very unique. So when I think about a paper like that, I think about content that would make sense with that kind of vibe, you know? So just for example, if you take pictures of like motorcycles or uh, race cars or, uh, you know, people welding, um, anything with like, anything with a metallic component to it or a, a contrast, like a high contrast, scene kind of makes sense in my mind for the metallic papers whereas kind of a a lighter more whimsical fantasy vibe like the majority of my stuff uh, kind of just doesn't make sense in my mind for the metallic stuff but I still think it's important to try try different things out um, so, so if you can and you haven't before definitely get your hands on a metallic paper or two and just give it a try and, and decide for yourself. Um, but but those two there, yeah, you see the, the pearl, which is kind of a subtle, uh, almost pearlescent, slightly warmer color. And then the metallic silver, it it's very metallic silver. I mean, almost foil, foil-like. And Evan, do you know which one, someone's asking, which one is... Um the top image and which one's more the bottom? Is the silver the top? Yeah, so the top one is the silver one. Uh, and it is, uh, it's thicker, it's heavier, it's, uh, it kind of almost wants to curl a little bit just from its density. Uh, so in that image, the top one there is the silver and the, bottom one is going to be the pearl. Yeah, they're super hard to photograph. So anytime we're trying to show the silver or the pearl in an image, it is very, very difficult. Um, yeah, it's definitely a consideration if, if you're going to be like photographing prints, uh, lighting is, is gonna be huge and certain things like the metallic or some of the glossier ones are going to have unique challenges just because the surface wants to be really reflective of all the light. Right. And someone is asking about sample packs. Um, I know Evan recommended trying this paper. We do have sample packs on our website where there's two sheets of every single paper um, that you can get on our website, moabpaper.com. So you can definitely test it out. And this kind of segues into another question which was that Moab does have some specialty papers that might not be for everyday use, like the Slick Rock or even our Mo and Kopi paper, which I know you've reviewed before. Um, mm -hmm. Have you you've used these papers, and how did you? Um, I know you kind of talked about Slick Rock already, but what did you think of the results for the the uh, Mo and the Kopi? Slick, oh, the Mo and Kopi. Uh, so those ones are some of my absolute favorites. I. I love them, um, and I, there's a couple images of those as well. Uh, Let's see if I can. I think they're more towards the end, and it should be kind of obvious just from the fibers on one of them. Might be able to find it here. So, yeah, uh, I think that the sample so pack is a good place to start. Um, and, and my recommendation for, if you're trying to suss out what kind of paper you think you might like, the sample pack is a great place to start. And what I would recommend is you take a few images and print them just on all the different papers rather than a whole bunch of different images on like every different paper. Like 
keep your keep your sample size small, right? Pick your favorite, you know, three or four images that you've ever shot and just print those on a bunch of different papers. And I think that'll kind of help you see the difference, kind of feel out the difference in the paper aesthetics more than, you know, more than printing your, your whole photo library on a different sheet every single time. Right. So here's the Mo and Kopi paper that we were yeah. talking about before. Yeah, um, so those are definitely the specialty papers for sure. And I love, absolutely love both of them. Uh, the one image where you can actually see the fibers is the, uh, the Mo and Kopi, uh, the NRIU 55. And that one, um, if you just look at a blank sheet, it's kind of an intimidating paper. It almost looks like, you know, it, it has a bunch of veins or, or something. It has a really unique surface texture. And what you're seeing is the fibers, the actual uh, fibers of the paper um, still intact, still kind of um, running throughout the paper. And that's one where you kind of want to be cognizant of what you're printing on it um, because those are going to show through on the image. So if your image was like a headshot, just a, you know, edge to edge person's face, that one specifically, probably not gonna be optimal, unless that's what you're going for, but it's because you're gonna see the fibers on the final image. So, so that's one of those examples of just a heavily textured, super unique paper that um, that you're going to have wildly different results based on what you print, what type of image you put it on, if that makes sense. Right. But overall, the Moen Kopi and the uh, and Ryu, I mean the Kozo, those are those are two of my favorites. They they feel like they feel like old comic books, if that makes sense. Like. 90s era comic books is just what it, they remind me of. So this one is the um, Umryu, and then the one that we just looked at before, this one is the Kozo. Yeah, and they're they're pretty similar. The only difference is the Unryu has the fibers running throughout. Right, and it's much That's thinner. Yeah, it's a it's a significantly lighter weight. The GSM on that I think is the fifty five. So it's super lightweight. Um, you know, basically see through if you hold it up to to a light source. Right. So you've reviewed a, several several papers for f stoppers. Um, what do you look for when you're reviewing each paper? Um, you know, generally I'm just looking for things that I haven't seen before, I haven't really done before. Um, you know, I don't really have like a, a fixed uh, checklist, if that makes sense, but um, anything different, anything that I think has, that I have like a really positive uh, uh, reaction to, Hey, Evan. Yep. Oh, sorry. I think your voice just cut out for a minute. No worries. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So a lot of people are also asking about protecting your prints. Do you do anything to protect them? Do you keep them in um, like an archival box or spray them with anything? So I haven't. Uh, experimented with any of the spray before. I know that's an option, um, and uh, I think people should definitely consider that. Um, I, I definitely keep them, keep all my prints kind of stored in an archival box, um, just in like a dry, generally dry place. Um, 
Yeah, and and if you're going to be doing a lot of, if it's if it's a print that you like really, you know, care about, you really are attached to, you want it to just really really last. I mean, technically speaking, you should probably be wearing white gloves when you're handling it, just so the oils on your fingers don't uh, contaminate the edges. But you know, that's kind of for museum type stuff or your really really special prints. Um, Generally, just if you're if you're handling your prints, just make sure you have clean hands and then store them in uh, in dry places. Um, but archival boxes are basically the easy the easiest uh, method for for longevity when it comes to prints. Right, and we also have a desert varnish spray that you can use on your prints that will protect it from uh, any fingerprints as well. So, just moving on. Um, Oh, someone is also asking, do you suggest a matte paper that has um, like very deep blacks? A matte with deep blacks. Let's see here. Well, the museum rag has pretty deep blacks. That's definitely a matte paper that I like. I know that there's an image of that one. It's the gal in the red dress in the water. Um, let me see here. I'll probably find some of those. Just going through what I have in front of me here. Yeah, I'm trying to go back to some one, of these. Uh, yeah, that one kind of does jump out as, as a good answer to that question. The Museum Rag 300 has pretty deep blacks for a matte paper um, it has really minimal surface texture so so it's pretty safe in that regard um, i would say that's a good place to start i'm looking at that one in front of me right now and uh yeah give that cool. one a try um what advice do you have for a photographer or artist looking to choose a paper for their work Maybe someone that hasn't um, experimented with paper at all yet. So if you're just looking to kind of first kind of kick open the door to printing, I would say, I would say, oh, that's a tough question. I mean, I guess I would say, get yourself a sample pack, pick, your favorite image, like just one image that you that you really love, that you think kind of exemplifies your your style and your aesthetic, and print that image on like ten different papers, and then lay them out in front of you on the floor, like a clean floor or a clean table, um, you know, in a good just like well lit area and just look at the different images like it, it's the same image on on maybe on 10 or so different papers or you know five different papers or what have you and then of those pick out your favorite and then kind of just ask yourself well why is that your favorite you know if you have the same image laid out in front of you on a number of different papers and you gravitate towards one of those I think that that's a good place to start because there's a reason that you're gravitating towards that paper if it's the same image. Right. And even before getting a sample pack, we do have some swatch books that we give out at shows or um, that you can get online. And this can even show you without printing on them, just a small piece of each paper that you can kind of compare and take a look at. Um, and just moving on from there, um, how does printing a colored colored image affect your paper making decision if you're printing color or black and white? So generally speaking, I would say the majority of my work is color, like 95, 98% um, is color. So I'm not really, I'm not, I, I would not consider myself like a go-to source on on monochrome images, black and white images in general. Um, I have a few that I've done 
Um, but generally speaking, like my approach is very color oriented just because that's the overwhelming majority of, of my work. Um, if you, Paige, if you can go to uh, one of the uh, shots of the gorilla that I sent you, that's one of the yep. uh, monochrome and that's a black and white image there. Um, and which paper is this on? So there's two different ones. One is on the rag bright. Uh, so that's going to be a bright white Entrada that's, paper. Yep, that's this one right here. Yep, and that one is going to be, that's a matte paper on the bright white. And then the other one is the Barita rag, the 305. And that's and this one. Those two side by side, I mean, if I were to have a preference uh, for the for the monochrome work, like I said, that I do very little of. But for the for the monochrome stuff, in my mind, that's it's high contrast work. It's deep blacks, strong highlights, whites. You know, heavy contrast element. So I would be inclined to go with the Barita. Like anything that's going to have deeper blacks. Uh, and kind of just accentuate the the native contrast uh, would be my inclination. So for this image specifically, if I set these side by side, I can tell you the Barita rag uh, stands out more to me. It pops more uh, for this image. So yeah, t people typically um, go for a juniper when it is a black and white image, just because it produces really deep blacks. So these are just some comparing. And yeah. someone is asking about um, the different tools that you use. Do you, what camera um, do you go with and what type of printer do you print with? For sure. So um, as I shoot with a Nikon. Uh, it's a D750. Um, I'd say a good 90% of the time I'm just using an 85 millimeter. Um, even for the floral stuff, I tend to just stick with my 85 mil. Um, but I will say, and I will stress that I don't really think the camera equipment matters that much. Um, I think once, once, once you kind of know what you're trying to do, know what you want to do, um, you know, and, you, and you've had some practice and all that, then and really you, you kind of should be able to do that with pretty much any camera. So. I've never been one to get super concerned with with the equipment technical things in terms of cameras. But uh, yeah, but for those curious, I shoot with a Nikon D750 and my go-to lens is an 85 millimeter. But um, yeah, but if you put a camera in my hands, I like to think I can get the job done kind of regardless. As far as printers, uh, a lot of a lot of different options out there. Um, and I'm no expert on different types of printers. Uh, I will say the Pixma Pro 10 is one that I've had a number of prints done on. And it seems it's really straightforward uh, to use. Uh, it's, I think it goes up to like 13 by 19. So you're not going to be doing enormous prints on that one. But, you know, that's a good size. Um, and everything smaller than that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about the extent of my expertise on different types of printers specifically, I think. Right, and next week we're having um, a webinar with Evan Parker who can answer the real technical questions about using different printers and what you can be using for your work. So definitely check that webinar out. Um, with a paper like Entrada that has a textured version and also a smoother version, how do you decide which one you're going to use or um, like which do you choose for your work? Do you prefer one over the other? So at the end of the day, uh, if there was just one point that I could stress more than anything else, it would just be the subjective nature of all of this. Uh, it, there's no, there's no right answer. Um, I'll say generally speaking, I gravitate more towards matte papers and textured papers but you know that's not an absolute uh, there are some where i think where there's some varietas where i think that's just the right call um, 
So I think I think you have to try a couple of different things uh, in order to figure out what what you like the most, or if you just know what you like the most. If you know that you're a you're a glossy style paper person, I mean, stick with it. But uh, generally speaking, I like the mats. I like the textures um, because because the content of my work is fairly muted and matte to begin with. So I think. I think it just makes sense to accent it in that way. Right. And a lot of people are kind of curious. I know this isn't necessarily about paper, but how do you prep all of your um, prints for paper? Do you have a specific routine that you use? Um, I think that's a question that Evan Parker would be great at answering. Um, like the technical prep stuff. I can tell you, I export my files from via Lightroom. Right. And that's, uh, yeah, that's about it. I do, I do all my organizational and exporting via Lightroom and all my editing in Photoshop. And that's, that's about it. Uh, as far as actual uh, technical prep work, uh, I think Evan Parker would be the guy to talk to about that for sure. Yeah. And like I mentioned, we'll have him next Tuesday at two o'clock, same time. Um, and someone is also asking about using a warmer tone paper versus a cooler tone paper. Do you have an opinion on that? For sure. So uh, different papers are going to have a different warmth to them, uh, which I guess the simplest way to think about that is kind of the the brightness of the white as well as kind of the the natural yellow of the paper like a warmer paper is going to be more yellow than a cool bright white um, so when you're thinking about your prints depending on the paper that's just something you want to be aware of um, like super warm colored or warm hued papers are going to bring that through to your image um, sometimes more drastically than others. Uh, I've seen, um, I'm trying to think of the most extreme I've ever seen. I want to say it was the, uh, from the Mullen-Copy line, I think it was the Bizon, where they have a really, really warm version. And I, I mean, to the point where like your image is being heavily yellowed because the paper is just so warm. Um, and it's interesting, uh, it, it works for some things. If you printed a monochrome image on a really warm paper, it would almost have a sepia type vibe to it, depending on how, how warm we're talking. But um, yeah, I'm kinda, I'm just reading your question here. Brightness, warm, cold tone, so it's basically it's basically, uh, it's just the, the color temp of the paper is basically going to translate through to your image. So warmer papers are going to warm the color of your image, if that makes sense. And it's subtle, like generally speaking, it's not drastic, um, but it's there. So just, just be aware that your warmer papers are going to have a warming effect on your image and your cooler just bright white papers are going to have uh, the same, just brighter, cooler uh, effect. And someone is asking about ICC profiles. They're all on our website, moabpaper.com. Uh, there's a link right there on the, our website. And then I kind of want to go through some of the papers. You have all these prints in front of you. Um, and kind of talk about some of these different paper comparisons and what what are your favorites and what do you see in certain papers um, that you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. So we have this one. Which paper is this on? Let me grab that one. Let's see. So if that's the matte one, that's the rag natural. 
Right. That is the Entrada Reg Natural 300. And the 300 GSM is, is that, I, I like the, the weight of that one a lot. That's a good paper thickness. Um, yeah, so Entrada comes in a 190 GSM and a 300. So the 300 really feels like a much heavy, heavier and sturdier paper, um, which is nice. And then there's also the natural and then there's a bright white, which I believe that we should have an image of the bright white as well somewhere. It might be this one. Yes, I believe so. That's the bright. So you can kind of tell, it's hard to tell through a screen, but you can tell that this one has a little bit warmer tone, um, like the question that was just asked, as opposed to this one with a little bit of a brighter white behind it. Right. The brighter white is going to have uh, a little bit of a cooler, cooler tone to the paper and thus to the image, whereas the, uh, the rag natural is slightly warmer, but it's, it's subtle. It's not, not drastic on these ones. The, the rag natural in my mind is still, is still white paper. Right. Still the white. And then talking about printing landscapes, does your opinion change when you're printing a landscape as opposed to printing a portrait? Um, I wouldn't say that it changes drastically. Um, you know, I've, I've printed some landscapes for gifts for family members and that kind of thing for the holidays. Uh, you know, I have a couple hung up on my walls uh, at home. Um, but, but generally, I kind of apply the same philosophy where I'm, I look at the image and kind of just ask, um, you know, what is the image I'm looking at first and foremost? Uh, I think if you if you pick a paper to match an image, I think you have a stronger result than if you just pick an image and then separately just pick a paper. Uh, I think I think they can work together to make the overall product stronger. Um, I think. Well, I think it's pretty common in landscapes to have high elements of contrast. Um, and so your baritas and your glossy papers a lot of times lend themselves really well to um, really, really crisp, poppy type images. Uh, this one here that you have on the screen of the landscape, that's the drag textured. And um, yeah, I'd say it's of a subtle texture, almost like a watercolor paper of sorts. Right, and some people I know like to use the textured with landscapes because sometimes with the trees and the mountains, it looks a little more lively with showing some texture on those. For sure, for sure. So there's a close up of the paper. I do almost everything just on a case by case basis. Um, and then just to talk about um, working with clients, do, do many of your clients ask for prints after their photo shoots? Um, well, you know, uh, unfortunately we live in a really, really digital age. So I would say prints are not really on the forefront of most people's minds. Um, but with that being said, I always like to make them available to make sure that people know that if they are interested in prints or if they've never really given any thought that they can and should do so and that I would be uh, more than happy to assist in that process to make them available uh, to kind of walk them through some options and that kind of thing for sure um, I think Depending on depending on who your client is, I think it's it's very possible that they've just never really given any thought. Um, so, so if you're out there with clients, I think it's kind of if you, if they don't ask you about prints, you should make sure that you you feel comfortable making it known that you that you do make prints and that those are available, and that it's something that people should at least consider. Right. And if you if they were to ask for prints, would you provide them with a variety of prints on different papers or would you just kind of 
use your judgment to say, I think that this image would look best on this paper. So that's what I'm going to provide. Yeah, it would, it would probably depend on the specific circumstances, but like generally speaking, I would, I would probably make a recommendation uh, if there was a specific image or images that they were looking at, uh, looking at having printed, I would, I would make a recommendation just based on, on all the different things I've seen and experimented with. I would probably say, you know, in my opinion, like, I think this one would look really great, you know, presented this way. Um, and probably try to steer them in the in that direction that I think would look most optimal. Right, right. Um, okay, is there anything else that you want to add? Any um, extra advice to people before we wrap up? There are a few questions about um, framing and just protecting, which we mentioned the desert varnish on our website. Um, Evan, I'm not sure, do you frame your prints or have you framed your prints? Yeah, I've definitely framed some before. Like if they're for, if it's for a gift or if it's for a client or it's for presentation, um, I think framing is, is um, pretty important, uh, definitely an option. Do you frame them yourselves or do you um, send it out? I typically just go to a local, I try to find a local place, whether it's just a, uh, like a mom and pop custom frame shop or like, you know, like a Michael's style framing department. Um, and, you know, like choosing a paper for an image, I mean, choosing a, once you have your image on your paper, if you or personally choosing the frame to go with it. That's kind of just another layer of accenting the image, right? Like just right. The default black frame is not necessarily the best or, you know, or just a, a brown frame, you know, like a walnut frame is not just always right. So if you do end up at a, at a custom framing store, um, you know, take your image on, on the paper and hold it up to a whole bunch of different frames and try and find a frame that you think works with the image. You'll end up with basically a triple thread where you've picked the paper to match and accent your image. And now you're picking a frame to accent the paper image combo. Uh, and you'll just have a really stellar finished product. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's always, I feel like an opinion of what, you really want your image to look like at the end of it. It's really just what do you feel like your image should show? And I mean, yeah, it is a lot of, a lot of testing and comparing. And I think the sample box is the way to go if you're just getting started printing to just to compare all of your images um, on different papers and seeing what really fits your work. And then we do have uh, one last question about the desert varnish adding a gloss, it doesn't add any gloss to your image. Um, it just protects it. So the spray will look like almost you applied nothing on that image. Yeah, from what I remember way back in the day when I used to do like pencil drawing, um, if it's similar, you would spray the, you would spray the pencil drawing with the, with the varnish spray basically just to um, prevent prevent like streaking after the fact um, to right. kind of seal it. And it, it wasn't, uh, it didn't turn it into a glossy paper. If that's the question, it just uh, protects the surface of it. Right. Well, thank you so much, Evan, for joining us. Um, someone is asking about a replay. Yes, you'll receive a link in 24 hours to rewatch this video. It doesn't unfortunately have a Fast forward rewinds, but it will be put up on our YouTube channel in a few days. So then you can um, watch on your own time there. And then just stay updated on our moabpaper.com slash Moab TV channel. Um, we'll be posting new webinars that come up. So next week we have Evan Parker who can answer any technical questions you have. Um, I know there are some questions about Photoshop and Lightroom. So definitely head to that webinar next week to ask him all of those questions that he can get to. So again, thank you so much, Evan, um, for talking about your prints and choosing a paper. It was really helpful. 
and yeah, hopefully sure. we'll see everyone next week. Yeah, uh, if I can real quick, let me just give a big shout out to Evan Parker. Uh, I know him, uh, I've met him at a number of events out here in the Washington area, and he's a awesome resource for all the really technical questions. He's an expert when it comes to your color profiles, uh, your actual, you know, printing engineering type stuff. Uh, he's been a really good resource and has helped me with a lot of things in terms of prints in the last couple of years. So if you can definitely tune in for that. And then, uh, yeah, just the, the one thing I would stress is, um, experiment with different papers because uh, there really there really is no right answer so so try different things and then when you find when you find what you like if you can identify why you like it um you'll be that much better for it uh yeah that's, that's it but thanks everybody for for hanging around checking in hopefully this was uh interesting and, and a good time for y'all uh